All right, you guys, it is time for a side dish. So good. We're making it in the Twin Cities Lab kitchen for the second time. This very rarely happens, but I happened to receive an email on Monday from a Twin Cities Live viewer who wrote, I know this is a long shot, but one of your Thanksgiving shows had a potato recipe that Steve just loved. By any chance, do you have the recipe? Listen, believe it or not, we know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> That's right. They're Antigone Sanders. She's making this make-ahead three cheese baked mashed potato, you guys. Oh, and everybody <laughs> is in the studio, has already tried it. They say they're unbelievable. The tasting table, which we're going to get to, they couldn't stop themselves. Yeah, they, they're they, they already started eating it. So we, uh, I cannot wait to try this. And it looks actually really simple. It is really simple. It is all the things things, all the decadent things in mashed potatoes. And I overheard Stephanie saying earlier that like you eat mashed potatoes once a year and it is Thanksgiving. My husband is Irish American. He would be happy if I had mashed potatoes on the table every day. <laughs> um, but it is not this mashed potato. This is like holiday mashed potatoes. It yeah. has white cheddar, it has half and half, it has garlic butter, sour Ooh. cream, cream cheese, and Parmesan cheese oh, in really? there. So it is next to impossible to be bad. It is, <laughs> cheese to potato ratio is almost one to one. And yes. I remember when you made these on the show and Steve and I lost our minds. Steve, I was on Steve's radio show with him this morning and he waxed poetic about these potatoes for like a solid six minutes of the show. I don't know if we were light on content or he's just really that passionate about the potatoes. No, I think he's really passionate. Yeah, he's so passionate, and they're they're just so delicious. So everybody is waiting to see how you make these. If you didn't see them the first time, so let's let's add things in. Okay, so obviously you're gonna boil your mashed potatoes. They're classic russets, one of the cheapest ingredients you can buy. So then you can go buy the best dairy that you want yeah. to make these good. So one thing that I wanted to teach everybody is how to get a great mash, and I think mm. it is really important. And people don't think about this that you have to dice everything quite evenly. Um, I think a lot of times people are just like, potato, chop, throw in water. Or throw the whole thing in or water. Or throw the right. whole thing in you water. You don't like that. I do not like that. I like to chop them all quite small, so they're going to be relatively even dice, and then they're all going to cook at an equal um, time and temperature. Well, they're probably going to boil faster. They're going to boil yeah. faster because yeah. they're smaller. I put them into cold water so everything comes to temp all at the same time. It's not the, don't treat your potato like a pasta, people. No. Yeah, I hope you guys are actually taking notes right now because it's those are really great tips yeah. already. We haven't even gotten to like the really, really yummy stuff <laughs> right, that makes exactly. it cheesy and garlicky and buttery. Yes. But to dice it up evenly, do all that, the cold water, okay. Right, because when you do the whole potato, inevitably you're gonna have one potato that's larger than the yeah. others and it's crunchy in the middle. So then if you do do it the way that I like to do it, once you take those potatoes oh, out, what? like they're so soft and mushy. And they're fluffy. And they're fluffy. So once I drain them, I put them back in the pot and on the heat again and kind of get some of that water out, let it kind of cook a little mm -hmm. bit on the stove for a couple of minutes. And then when everything is super hot, you cannot waste time. You can't like go and start something else. Then you have to start mashing the potatoes. I so. can see why this Irish husband of yours fell in love with you. You treat potatoes with the respect they I, deserve. I, I try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a reason he chose me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so in here we have mashed garlic cloves. Oh, and look so at that. I just use a little bitty strainer. And if you smell this, it is oh, delicious God. and garlicky. <laughs> So again, that's like a winner. You can't go wrong. With you could win with just butter. that right there. Oh, no. Yeah, and salt and pepper. Yeah, salt and, and then pepper. It's gonna be perfect. But then we've got the cute little turkey dish with my family's Thanksgiving turkey dish with some white cheddar. Then we have some half and half. This is great. And then you're gonna add. I like to do the parmesan actually last because it's kind of an odd texture. So Are you I get seeing all the, the ratio here, stuff here? I'm loving the ratio. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. And we're not done yet. No, we're not done yet. And then you've got the cream cheese. So then you put that in there. And this is not a full recipe. A full recipe is five pounds of potatoes, eight ounces Ooh. of cream cheese. And then you can just wow. mash it however you like to mash. Like, I've got this old-fashioned masher. It was my mom's. I will always use it. You might have something at home that you like to use better. It does not really matter. Oh, my god! So then you just get it as mashy and smooth as you like. Some people like a little chunk in it. their mashed potato. Other people don't. And then you put it in a greased baking dish, and then you top it with some more shredded parma or shredded um, cheddar. white cheddar. Yep. Put it in the oven until it gets bubbly 
and there you have it. So that's it. Just happens. check it when it gets bubbly and then it's done yeah, because it's already it. cooked. It's already cooked. So you can make it ahead. That's what's so great about this. Like you cannot make Thanksgiving dinner in a day. No. So this you can make a month ahead of time and pop it in the freezer and then take it out the night before and just put it in the oven. And those of us who have hosted Thanksgiving need a lot of these like secret recipes up your sleeve that you can make ahead of time so you're not pulling your hair out day off. Listen, this well, portion is appropriate for us and um, <laughs> let's send it over to yeah. our tasting table. Uh -huh. Stephanie March, uh, why don't you do the honors? How are you doing over there? I'm good. Ours are served in a martini glass yeah. and I'm just <laughs> telling you that oh. this I is not panel. inappropriate. This is very much like, like I said, <laughs> I just need a cigarette and then like, it's the best. I'm going to just go and sit on my couch and Thanksgiving can happen without me if I have <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah. This is this is yeah. proper service. That crust, the cheesy crust that's happening in here, like that's just like, it's like a little treasure hunt to find more of that. It's yeah. just gold. And that cheese to potato ratio, Elizabeth, you're right on. Oh, and I think no. I really understood where I'm getting that amazing garlic flavor mm -hmm. because of the butter element to this. I yeah. didn't see that happening. What a wonderful way to do mm. it. But it's a subtle yeah. garlic flavor. Like it's mm, not it's like a garlic wonderful. punch you in the face. It's no. that beautiful, subtle, like garlic infusion which is so good. How happy are you with I'm this? so happy right now, and Steve, I understand why you love this so much. And you didn't, you, the, the bacon on top, it's just a nice little chef's kiss. Just a little something. Yeah, you gotta have a little something. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so good. I mean, these are better than I remembered. Well, there we go. I mean, they are so good.